is Sims, and we are back with more Cinderella Phenomenon, and we are in Waltz's Route. We're going to start Waltz's Route. Um, so this is the last route in the game. Um, so yeah. Woohoo! Uh, so we'll see how it goes, but so we're going we're gonna to jump right in here. So for the first time, we are going to go right here, because the last time, well, the first time we played it, we went left, and we met... Karma, and then we've just kept going left because we knew going right would lead to waltz. So we haven't done it until we got to this part. So first time ever, we're going to go right. I know we're not reading through the whole game again. Um, I knew we do that. And sometimes with things, we're actually going to just not do that in this one. Because we kind of all know. And it, it changes quite a bit in chapter three. So chapters one and two doesn't make a difference. Anyway, hey, this way. <laughs> Boy, boy voice. No, he's got his waltz voice, even though he's a kid. Anyway. Uh, you're... No time to talk, princess. How do you know who I am? There's another one! Stop running, you two! Come on. The boy grabs my wrist and pulls me after him. He takes off with a sudden burst of speed, and that I'm running even faster than I just was. I'm not entirely convinced following him is a good idea... But at least the boy seems to have a better sense of direction than me. Oh! A running causes rocks in the pathway to come loose, and before I notice them in my path, I step down hard on them. A sharp pain shoots up into my foot, and I collapse to the ground. That's true, she doesn't have any shoes. It hurts. Princess! I try to stand, but the pain on my feet is unbearable. I fall back down into the dirt with a gasp. I can't. We got you now! Just hand over your coins and neither of you will get hurt. I won't let you touch her. Ha! Huh, says the little boy in a manlier voice than you have, but whatever. Well, well, well. Oh, ahem, I'm sorry. Well, well, well. A man. Yeah, not really. Karma. <laughs> well, sort of. I love karma so much, karma. Karma, 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 karma. But here's, he's not wearing green. He's It's blue, red, and gold, so it's red, gold, and navy, but whatever. What is this ghastly sight before me? Two adults threatening a child and a lady? How very ungentlemanly. What are the likes of you even doing around this neighborhood? You asking to get fleeced? Asking? Perhaps I'm in the mood for a scuffle. So this is a slightly different version of the CG because I don't think Waltz was with us. He couldn't have been with us. Or did he run up to us? I don't remember, but I don't remember Waltz being in there. But that could have been just because I was drawn to karma because look how fucking pretty he is. Sorry. I'm drinking my smoothie while we play the game. I said I want to wait. And I was going to get a brain freeze. So if you hear me drinking, that's what it is. Um, and the, the nobleman brandishes his sword. His expression confident. Maybe even cocky. Mm, that's karma. Look at his fucking face. He's so beautiful. Show me what you've got, sirs. <laughs> and please, don't bore me. Who are these people? I ain't dealing with this for the money. He's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. Yeah, okay. I think your friend is the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. There's way too much trouble for a little gold. You're late. Sorry, kid. You know how hard it is for me to be invisible around here. Wait, what did you just call me? At ease, small one. These two know each other? That was great. At ease, small one. What did you just call me? Oh, well, you're adorable. Hey, princess. Princess! Calm down. Parfait will be able to help her. But for now, we need to move before anyone else sees us. Yeah. Don't worry. You're safe now. Dot, 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 dot. Okay. So, now when we go through, we can just skip through because we basically just... I have no questions because we asked them all and we already know what they are. Um... Uh, we can do either one of them. doesn't really matter, and we've done them both, so. And 
then we can technically do anything we want. So we're just going to stay silent because now throwing the tray at him gets Rumble to like us. And we don't need that. Even though it doesn't really matter because we're going to pick Waltz. So. How dare you touch me, sir? Oh. Karma and Rumble. What the hell just happened? Hold on a second. Sorry. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh. I didn't go pick up, well, not that it matters. I didn't go pick up my fucking mail because, like, I was like, I knew that the package was left at my door, even though they're not supposed to fucking do that. And then now there's another one in my fucking mailbox. God damn it. Oh, well. I'll get it tomorrow. Uh, 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 uh. Waltz, of course. He was just here earlier. Maybe he went back inside. The fuck? I stop and stare at the small orbs of light floating around the room. What is going on? Ah, uh, no, this isn't it. I watch in awe as Walt snaps his fingers and all the orbs disappear with a pop. Oh, princess. What are you doing? Practicing my next magic trick. I still haven't perfected it. How come you're able to use magic? Are you a witch? A fairy? A good magician never reveals his secrets. Right. Did you need anything? I take a deep breath. Can you... Can you teach me about goodness? Huh? Why do you look so surprised? Well, it's just that... I didn't think you'd come to me for help. Well, we're saving the best for last, apparently. <laughs> Even though it's weird, because you're, like, in a ten-year-old body, but whatever. If you don't want to... No, 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 that's not it at all. I'm happy you asked me. Yeah. The hints for this one, even though we're following a guide, which I think is cute. Be confident. Be trusting, though there's a time you'll have to not listen to Waltz and be the most selfless person you can be in this route. That's adorable. Oh, Waltz. Anyway. What would you like to know about goodness? How do you do a good deed? That is a very broad question. I don't think I can give you a specific example. Then how do I do good? The easiest way to do good is to make someone happy. That's what everyone told us. So a good deed would involve making someone happy. How do I do that? That wasn't helpful! Damn it, Waltz. Waltz. I find Walt sitting in the corner of the tavern reading a book. You didn't strike me as the kind of person that would read books. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Though to be honest, I wouldn't be reading this if I wasn't preparing for one of my shows. Shows? I don't just do magic shows. I perform puppet shows as well. I have to be familiar with several bedtime stories for those. That's kind of fucking adorable. You're like, oh, he's a little, he's a magician! Come on. People either love a magician or hate a magician, but I'd rather love a magician than a mime, right? Mimes and clowns are scary. Magicians are kind of cool. Depending. Depends. You should come with me sometime. The children are always so happy at the shows. You might get one of your good deeds helping out. I've never been around children for extended amounts of time. Okay, well, that's the part. You're like, ah, ha, ha. Kids suck. You've got to be patient, too. Children can be difficult to handle. You speak as if you aren't a child yourself. That's because I'm not a child. Waltz hates it when he's treated like a child. Especially when karma teases him about it. Besides, patient isn't, patience isn't just for children. It's necessary in a lot of situations. It's funny because he's got like a man voice. Like I just imagined in my head. And like his normal voice and then he's a kid. But like obviously it's the same way with karma like karma just had the same voice the whole time even though when he's mrs karma he has the lady voice and then when he's mr karma he has the normal voice to disguise himself so he sounds like a woman um but i didn't realize that until like because obviously we don't have the voice i i think there's actually voice i don't know if there's voice acting in this i don't know but i always turn it off because it distracts you when you're reading the lines you know um and but it's just weird because I didn't realize that Karma would have that voice. And I was like, oops, Karma has like, well, it's a good thing we didn't give Karma a deep man voice because that would have sounded weird. But he doesn't strike me as that kind of a person. 
But it's just funny because I'm assuming Waltz is probably not supposed to sound like adult Waltz. But he does. <laughs> this is how we play games. We make things weird. Yeah. It's fun. Uh, it's not Okay, we already read that. I would guess you might need to work on that. Excuse me? Walt shrugs and with an awkward smile returns to his book. Hmm. He's not very helpful. <laughs> He's like avoiding us or something. Pick a route, pick a route, pick a route. Who are we picking? Walt. Peter Pan. I decide that I can't waste any more time. The next day I search for Waltz as soon as the broom stops dragging me around. I swear he was just here a while ago. Anise, have you seen Waltz? Oh, I just saw him walk back inside. It's like we're outside. We're not outside. I find him talking with Parfait and Delora in the reception area. All of them are speaking in solemn whispers. As soon as Parfait and Delora notice me, they break off their conversation with Waltz. Both the witch and the fairy step away from Waltz. Excuse us, princess. I watch curiously as Delore and Parfait leave the room without another word to me. What were they talking about? Bird, stop. You can't eat my headset. Waltz turns in my direction and smiles. Morning, princess. I run toward Waltz and watch as he begins to put some puppets on the table in a box. Are these toys yours? These? They're for a show I'm doing later. I wouldn't be playing with these things at my age. You look twelve. I don't see how that's too old to be playing with dolls. Isn't it funny? No, I just, I just love, you look 12. That's what I've been saying until obviously just earlier I said like 10, but I was like, I downgraded him a little because I've been saying like 12 the whole time. He's like fucking 12. <laughs> but he does. He's like, it looks like a kid. And he's like, I'm like, F I'm 37. <laughs> Sorry, I took a sip. I told you before, didn't I? I have the Neverland curse. He never explained what his curse was. I'm actually older than you are. I find that hard to believe. You don't know the story of Peter Pan, do you? It's not my fault that Mother had all the fairy tales removed from the palace. When I don't answer, Walt only sighs and gives me a small smile. I assume that's a yes. Peter Pan is a boy who lives in Neverland. It's a place where no one ever grows up. I'm stuck in a child's body as a result of my curse. I won't revert to my real form until my curse is broken. Poor thing. But how old are you really? I'm 22 this year. <laughs> like, that sucks! <laughs> Although, when, I wouldn't mind being 10 years younger. I would seriously mind, though, if I were 12, because that would suck. Oh, I gotta do this all over again. But 10 years younger, I can handle that. Good age. What? I can only stare in shock at Waltz's childish appearance. It's hard to believe that he's actually older than I am. Well, he's way wiser than you, which is funny, even if he was 12. I've never liked being treated as a child. That's never changed. Even when I was a child, I didn't like it. But let me assure you that it's much more annoying being treated like a child by someone who's younger than you. Waltz straightens with the box in his arms. Now, if my princess will excuse me... He turns to leave. Where are you going? I have a show to do today. Waltz does so many puppet and magic shows. How will he help me break my curse if he's never around? I'll go with you. What? I might accomplish a good deed if I come to one of your shows. That's true, but... Waltz sighs. I'm not sure it's a good idea. There are bad witches out there. Oh? There's an evil witch right here in the Marshen, but no one is protecting me from her. <laughs> Fuck, I love it. Are you talking about Delora? Who else would I be referring to? Walt stares at me for a long moment, eyes thoughtful. He sets the box down on the table again. Don't go anywhere. I'll ask Lady Parfait first. He leaves the room. I lean over the box on the table and see a pile of carefully detailed puppets. Everything looks handmade. I used to sew my own puppets before Mother found out and forbade me from making them. She told me that sewing was not something a crown princess should do. God, your mother sounds like a bitch. I mean, you, like, you understand that, like, crown princesses should be doing 
certain things and not do like you shouldn't play in the mud. You're a crumb princess, but like let her play in the mud in the backyard. Like no one will know. Just clean her up before the parties. You know what I mean? But like you shouldn't learn to sew. But at the same time, if you think about it, like a girl should sew and cook and not learn how to sword fight. Fuck you. I can learn how to sword fight. I gotta be able to protect myself. God damn it. But like her mother was like a bitch. Like, no, you just sit on your ass and be rich and beautiful. Have people fawn over you. That would be great and all, but I'd still like to have a skill. Hold on a second. Mm. Sorry. Interested? Interested. Walt's footsteps are so soft that I don't even notice that he's returned to the room until I see him standing before me. I step away from the box. How does he move so quietly? He's a fucking ninja. He's a puppet ninja. Puppet ninja! Permission granted. Come on, the show starts in an hour. I watch as Walt sets up a small booth on the street where I'd first seen him with Emmeline. Back then, I never thought I would see him again. It's nice to see you actively trying to break your curse. I shrug. I'm not convinced this will work, but Parfait said if I partnered up with someone, I might be able to break my curse faster. So you chose to partner with me? His tone of voice startles me. He sounds both happy and sad. Was he lying when he said he wanted to help me? That everyone in the Marchand was willing to help me? Would you rather I pick someone else? No! Him, no! I jump at a sudden reaction. Waltz awkwardly clears his voice. No, I... I'll do everything I can to help you. Waltz heads for the back of the booth. I begin to follow him, but I'm forced to stop when he holds out his hand. You haven't had enough training to be my personal assistant yet, princess. What? I stare at him, puzzled. I never said I wanted to be your personal assistant. And training? Why would one need training to assist with a children's show? You might just be able to snag a good deed if you agreed to become my assistant, you know. There's a teasing twinkle in Waltz's eyes as he waves me off. He's fucking adorable. But until you're ready, you should stay with the children and just watch the show. I think you'll enjoy the story. I recommend getting a place up front. You'll be able to see all the action that way. You can't come back here! You're not qualified to be here with your hand in a puppet! I mean, seriously, you gotta know what you're doing to do puppets. I mean, because you gotta, like, puppet show, and, like, I gotta move, and, like, you know. You gotta, you're underneath a box. Come on, you don't think, like, the Muppets are, I'm sorry, the Muppets are real, they're not puppets. Shh, it's okay, guys. I'm so sorry. Fuck! I mean, the Muppets really, legitimately, the Muppets and Sesame Street, they're real, because they have Twitter. Each of them has a Twitter page. I know I follow them on Twitter because who fucking wouldn't? I love the goddamn Muppets. That was always my dream job. Like, I don't know where it started, but it was like, I want to fucking go work at the Jim Henson Creature Shop and make Muppets. And then they had that fucking show where you could. And I was like, fuck those people. You suck. I want to make Muppets. I even had gotten a book, and I have no idea what it is, like, and actually how to use, like, the make the foam, like, actual, like, a fucking legit Muppet-type puppet. Like, but it's, like, so hard, like, the polyfoam and all the shit that you need, like, like, whatever the stuff is, like, well, where the fuck do you find this shit? You can't just order that shit on Amazon. You probably can, actually, now. I bet you can on Amazon. I don't know where that book is. I think it got lost somewhere, and it's sad, because it was, like, fucking cool. I mean, I make sock monsters, but they're not, like, puppets, but still the closest thing I'll ever get to working at the Jim Henson Creature Shop. Fucking making my own Muppet. Oh, God, be so amazing. Anyway. Weird shit about Spacey. There you go. Spacey fun facts. <laughs> when I don't move, Walt sighs and smiles at me. I promise the children won't bite unless you bite them first. Um, that's a lie. Children are bitey bastards. Some of them. Fine. That's my star. Star? He disappears around the back, leaving me alone. In no time at all, people begin to gather. Soon there's an impressive audience around Waltz's small booth. I look at the group of children that are clustered as close as possible to the front. They're all clearly excited for the show to start. I used to do puppet shows with my dolls, too. 
I felt less alone when I pretended my dolls could talk. I feel less alone when I talk to myself while playing video games, and which is really talking to you guys, but, you know, I'm in the past, and you're listening to this now, and not when I'm recording it, so I'm technically talking to myself, but it's not as weird. It's not weird. Not as weird. Look, like, were you talking to yourself? No, I was talking to the bird. Yes, I was talking to myself. I talk to myself all the fucking time. Bird, you can't have my smoothie. Because I actually, I don't think there's anything in there you can't eat, but. And I'm still alone. <laughs> Nothing has changed. I sigh as I sidestep to allow someone else to stand beside me. I'm surprised to see that the person is an adult. I look out at the gathering crowd of people and find that there's an almost equal ratio of children and adults. Why would adults be at something as childish as a puppet show? Hello, everyone. An excited silence falls over the area as Waltz's voice rises above the crowd. I, Waltz, am here once again to share another story with you. I hope you enjoy the show. Once upon a time, there was a village whose people were always happy. But one day an evil witch found the village. The evil witch carried darkness deep in her heart. She was jealous of the townsfolk, who were filled with so much light and happiness. Oh my god, he's telling our story. This is great. <laughs> he's telling the story of your mom. Who's the evil witch? Your mom. <gasps> no, I mean, literally, she was your mother. <laughs> Sounds like an insult until it's true. If I cannot be happy, the evil witch said, then no one can be happy. How overly dramatic. I almost jump when I feel a tug on my dress. I look down to see a little boy pulling at the hem of my skirt, through, though his eyes remain focused on the puppets. I don't like her. That witch, she's bad. His grip on my skirt tightens. He's wrinkling my dress. Honestly, we're supposed to remove his hand. Huh. You would think we're supposed to leave him alone. All right, let's do this. I reach down to pry the boy's hand off my skirt, but the boy moves faster than me. The moment I pull his hand away, he quickly refastens his grip, this time around my hand. Aha! I was wondering. I was like, maybe if we move, we're removing his hand off our skirt, we end up holding the kid's hand, and that's why it's a good thing as opposed to just leaving him be. Because then it looks like we care more about the kid or we're going to bond more with the kid, which is a good thing for Walt. See? It's things like this, though. You don't know. You're like, leave him alone. You think, oh, well, prying him off. Like, get off of me, kid! You never know. You never know sometimes with options. Remove his hand. Like, get off me, kid. She could be a bitch, and you're thinking, oh, just... Take his hand off your skirt where, like this. You end up holding the kid's hand, which might, is better. You know what I mean? Like, you just never know. Uh, anyway. Hey, the boy doesn't move his hand. In fact, his hold only tightens so much so that I find it impossible to pull my hand away. There's no way I can make him let go without causing a scene. Now I'm going to be stuck holding the hand of a little boy I don't know until the end of the show. How did this happen? Darkness spread over the village. The people began to suffer. They forgot what happiness felt like. One villager decided to leave and find a good witch that would help save everyone from the evil witch. This villager knew it would be very dangerous, for if he were discovered, the evil witch would certainly kill him and his family. I wonder if he's like, if they're marionette puppets or like hand puppets. Like, you know what I mean? They're puppets. It's a puppet show. But is it like a hand puppet show? Like a, you know, like a Muppet type of puppet show? Where obviously like... That's way more detailed than hand puppets, but is it like that kind of puppet? Like Harry Potter Puppet Pals puppets? Those are amazing. You should watch those. Um, or are they like marionette puppets? Like, you know, like the goat herders in The Sound of Music. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Two obscure weird references! Everyone should have seen The Sound of Music. If you haven't, what the hell is wrong with you? It's a classic. I'll admit when I was younger, I didn't love that one as much as I do now. But then again, you know, sometimes it takes a while for you to just realize that Julie Andrews is like a fucking goddess and we should worship her. She's amazing. Anyway, now I want to watch this on the music. When I was a kid, I actually, it was, it was, um, Gone with the Wind that I loved. I loved Gone with the Wind. And now I would probably choose to watch Sound of Music over Gone with the Wind. It's really weird. Anyway, uh, this villager knew it would be very dangerous. For if he were discovered, the evil witch would certainly kill him and his family. But the man knew he had to try if he wanted to see each see the other villagers smile again. If he ever wanted to see me, sorry. Many days later, the man finally returned with a good witch 
whose heart was filled with light as the, was as filled with light as the evil witch's was filled with darkness. The good witch, unable to bear the sight of the villagers' suffering, decided to help them. She cast a powerful spell that would send the evil witch away and save the village at the cost of her own life. Once the spell was cast, the darkness disappeared from the village. To this day, the people of the village are said to carry the good witch's light within them, and everyone lived happily ever after. But aren't all witches evil? That's simply not true. I've met a good witch, one with a heart more light and loving than any fairies. More of the children begin to ask questions. I sigh, unable to do anything except wait while Waltz is bombarded with questions. Thank you! The boy turns. The boy that took my hand gives it one last squeeze before running off to join his friends. What did he thank me for? Once the audience finally leaves, Waltz comes out from behind the booth and smiles up at me. The show is a success. Princess? There was a boy. He thanked me even though I did nothing for him. A little boy who was with you? But you did do something. You held his hand. I didn't want to. I realized that when I saw the annoyed look on your face. It would have been a good of you... It would have been good of you to do it if you'd meant to calm him down. What? That boy was really frightened by the evil witch in the show. He thanked you because you held his hand and stayed with him when he was scared. Sometimes just having someone beside you when you're afraid is enough. Having someone beside you. I think back on all the times I felt scared. Mother always told me to hide my fear and to never cry because it made me appear weak. I could never ask for her help, and the king was never there for me. Every time I was afraid, I was alone. I shake off the memories and realize that Waltz is asking me a question. What did you think of the show? It was short and simple. That's it? I created that entire show, you know. Story, characters, and everything. It could have been better. Oh, God, we're a dick. You wound me. I have nothing more to say, and Walt seems disheartened by my silence. You always complimented my stories, even when they were silly. Walt, telling me stories? I don't recall such a thing. He makes it sound as if we've known each other for a long time. Well, he's only four years older than you, and your mother did make you forget your memories. So you would have... And, like, we know now that Walt and Mithros were her students, right? So... Sh Spacey would have spent a lot of time with both of them. But our mother took our memories away, so we don't remember that. And Waltz is only a few years older than us, so let's say if we're like, even if we're like eight, then he was legitimately 12. Telling stories, I mean, like, you know what I mean? He's just a few years older than us, but he was always been creative telling us stories. Like, oh, that's so fucking adorable! Ah! We were cute little babies together! <laughs> sort of. Uh, he makes sound like... Okay. Before I can ask him for clarification, he changes the topic. Do you mind accompanying me to the toy shop before we head back? Do I have a choice? Walt's lips quirk with a smile as he picks up his materials. You might have fun, princess. Come on. This is the shop I went to before I was cursed. Feel free to look around, princess. I won't be too long. What are you making weird noises at, bird? Oh, dear God. What is that? Is it a giant spider? Oh, my God, it's a giant spider. Oh. Stay up. See, this is why I don't like cleaning my porch. I clean my spider porch, and now there's a giant spider on my ceiling. Hold on, where's my raid? I would normally not do this. Hey, get down. Get. Goddamn asshole. I know you're scared of the giant spider. So am I, and I don't think this is going to reach him. Nope, that raid just didn't go anywhere. Uh, he, I, he's just going to walk over my head. I don't want him walking over my head, guys. I don't I don't want the spider on my head, but I've got nowhere to go to be able to, like... My ceiling's vaulted, man. I can't get up that high. Maybe if I stand on my futon thing here. Okay, hold on. No, god damn it. I need, like, a fucking, like, long-range fucking raid thing. 
damn it. Like the best I'm going to be able to do is throw the can at the damn spider. He's big. It's big. It's got lots of legs. Like eight of them. Have you ever seen a spider with eight legs stuck? God. Oh my God. It's just, you know what's going to happen? I would normally just let it be, but he's like right above my head. I'm sitting in my diner. He's going to walk and he's going to fall on my fucking head. And I'm going to be like, what's this thing? And I'm going to, ah, there's going to be the giant spider in my motherfucking face. And now I'm scared. And God damn it, bird. <sighs> I love you. I do. I love you to death. But I hate the fact that you see goddamn bugs everywhere. Oh, he's like the bug whisperer. I don't know. He just sits there and all of a sudden he makes this noise. It's like, like fucking velociraptor kind of noise. And he looks up at the ceiling and you're like, what? And you just know it's because there's a bug. And there is. There's always a bug. And now he's staring at it. Well, go get it. Be a hunter and go get it. He's like, it's bigger than me. It's not really. It's really just, it's, it's a decent sized spider. But I know spiders aren't bad. And I left the one that was on my ceiling last night. There's like fucking spiders everywhere. You know what it is? It's because I cleaned off my spider porch in order to be able to, you know, in the br they probably got in on the broom. But it's like, it's just, why are they always near my head? I was sitting there yesterday playing games on my TV. Well, on my Vita TV, you know, I'm like, so over by the TV and there was a spider. And now I'm in the dining room where my desk is and there's a spider. Why? Why are you always above my head, you creepy bastards? Stay away. Like, you can stay, but go away. Don't come this way. No. Stay. No, go away. Because you know what seriously is going to happen. It's going to fall on me, and I'm scared, guys. Oh, my God, I'm scared. I'm not, like, scared of spiders. Like, I'm scared of them because they jump out at you. Like, you go to move something, and then it's like, ah! And you're like, fuck it, hey, spider! You know what I mean? Like, they don't run away from you. They run at, They like jump in your face. They, like, scare you. Or they do this. They're like, look, I'm just going to sit above your head and then I will suddenly somehow lose my grip and fall on you. Like, seriously. They, it's like it's like they all of a sudden, they're like, I got really good grip and I can climb on the ceiling for days until I'm above your head and then I fall on you. I feel they, they do it on fucking purpose. Spiders are dicks. Like, look, spider, you can stay. Just go the other way. Or go to that corner over there. That, that one. See that corner over there? Go over there. No, 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 no. He's, like, not moving, but every time he moves, he looks like he's coming closer, and it's, like, freaking me out. And like, 20 minutes later, we're still staring at this goddamn spider because, like, I can't. I can't do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to look away, and then I'm going to look up in two minutes, and he's literally going to be over my head or, like, dangling in my face. And then I will scream, and I will slap him. Like, I'm not even kidding. Anyway, feel free to look around, princess. I won't be too long. I nodded him before walking over to the doll's the doll display. The dolls here are actually beautiful. But with the gold I have left, I wouldn't be able to afford even one. I miss my dolls. Papa, I want that one! The sound of a little girl's voice draws my attention. I look around the store before spotting a little girl pointing at a big teddy bear. She looks expectantly at the man beside her. That must be her father. The man shakes his head, his eyes filled with regret. We can't afford that one, dear. Could you choose something else? The girl looks like she's on the verge of bawling. I back away, fearing that the child might throw a tantrum. Instead, she rubs at her eyes before looking up at her father with a slow smile. I understand. The man smiles and pats her head. Thank you for understanding, sweetheart. You're being so grown up. And meanwhile, we would have thrown a tantrum, but... I only need you and Mama to be happy. I love you, Papa. I love you, too. The king has never once told me that he loved me. He must be better off without me. Do I even belong at the palace anymore? Papa, look! The king! The moment I hear her say his title, I quickly rush from the toy shop. Hail the king! Long live the king! Hail King Gennaro! He's the first one I see. Mounted on his favorite white stallion as he waves at everyone. I spot Ophelia, Rod, and Emmeline with him, mimicking his motions. The king used to invite me to join him before, but I always declined. He always went out alone. Once a month, the king sets out to check on the conditions of the kingdom in person. It's his way of bonding with the townsfolk. The Order of Caldera trails behind the royal family with Sir Alcastor at the head, but there's one particular person that's missing. It's strange that Fritz isn't here. 
The parade is an impressive sight. The crowds lining the streets become denser with each passing second. I weave around the mass of people and attempt to get closer to the king. Thank you, everyone. He's smiling. A true smile. I've never seen him smile like that at me. A heaviness begins to weigh down my heart. Suddenly it becomes harder to breathe. Please look this way. Please look at me. The king is looking happier these days, isn't he? No, I don't think I've ever seen him so joyful. It must be his family. Happier. All I want is for the king to look at me. To see me. But he doesn't so much as glance my way once. I stare at the ground with bleary eyes. He's happy without me. I feel like we did a scene very similar to that before, did we not? Because that seems like I feel like... Or like she's at least had that conversation with herself. Because I just... That feels so familiar to me. It's like fucking deja vu. But I return to the toy shop with a heavy heart. The little girl from earlier is standing with her father by the door. He ruffles her hair before holding his hand out to her with a smile. She takes it with a giggle and the two walk off together. A hot ache sings through my blood as I watch them leave. Is this... jealousy? I reach up and clutch at my chest. My heartbeat feels painful. This is a terrible feeling. Princess? Spacey. I stare at Waltz, temporarily stunned by the fact that he called me by my name and not my title. Are you okay? Despite myself, I find my eyes drawn back to the little girl and her father as they stand just outside the door to the toy shop. Princess? I'm fine. Well, we're not fine! We're supposed to lie, though? Okay. You don't look fine to me at all. Out of the corner of my eyes, I see the little girl and her father as they disappear into the crowd outside the toy shop. I am. You still act tough, even though you're hurting inside. I'm not... Here. What's this for? In case you suddenly feel like crying. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not that weak. Waltz frowns when I don't take the handkerchief from him. He puts it back in his pocket with a shake of his head. Crying doesn't make you weak, princess. Walt's gaze moves to the set of teddy bears displayed on one of the shelves. He's quiet a few moments before he speaks. He's affected by the curse. What? The king. He can't remember you because of the curse. That doesn't mean he never cared about you. You know, don't get over here and sit on my shoulder and stare at the spider because you're going to freak me out. I keep glancing up there and it hasn't moved. Stop. The bird keeps like looking at me. He's like, he's sitting on my shoulder and I can just see his head cock like staring at the spider. And it's like, stop, you're freaking me out. You make me think it's moving and it's just sitting in the same spot. It's like, I can smell the rain. It's waiting. It's waiting for me to drop my guard. And then it's going to go Wee! and like lunge in my face. I know it. I know it. It's a bastard. It's a shady, beady eyed bastard. That's the reason you look so down, right? I was looking outside. I saw the way you looked at him. Doesn't he know that it's rude to stare? Oh, and how did I look? Hurt. I turn away before Waltz can see the frustration on my face. He loves you, you know. More than you'll ever know. And how would you know that? You don't know him at all. Everyone has their own way of expressing their love. I'm sure he has his own ways. By not being there when I needed him? He's never acted like a father to me. Princess... Don't pretend to know what my life at the palace was like, Waltz. This conversation is over. Let's return to the Martian. It hurts me so much that we're being such a bitch to Waltz. But that's what we are in the beginning. We're such a bitch. And then we, like, redeem ourselves. But I love that about her. That she's such a bitch. You know what I mean? You're like, he's just trying to help. Stop it. <laughs> but, like, I just love that she's not like, oh. I don't understand anything. Ah, she's like, fuck everyone. And then she just learns to be good. It's like really great. I love it. I do. Really do. Look at what I drew. Aw. Spacey, you know you're not meant to be in here. But I drew this picture of us. See? That's Mother and me. And you are holding Mother's hand. Go play somewhere else, Spacey. I'm busy. But you're always busy, Father. I just want to... Go to your mother. I'm sure she's looking for you. That's so sad because, you know, like, he, like, he really did, if you think about it. Like, he took out his frustration 
on being forced to marry this witch on this child. But he probably would have loved us if, like, mom died in childbirth. He would have been like, great, cool, witch is dead. Great. But instead, he was basically... Our, our mother was raising us to be a fucking evil witch. Like, literally. I, mean, I don't mean witch as, like... Because legit, we're a witch. I mean, like, bitch. Like, a fucking bitch. Right? Our mother was raising us to be, like, this nasty hag. And so, of course, our father was like, fuck off. You're just like your mother. Never gave us a, never give us a chance. You know what I mean? Where if he had tried a little bit, maybe, maybe we wouldn't be so cold. Because if you think about it, we'd have been like, mother's telling me that we should be like this, but father's teaching me that. And I don't know. And I'm so confused. And you'd be confused. But maybe you would have had something in your heart that wasn't so cold hearted. Legitimate. Like you wouldn't have a complete ice block for a heart. I mean, you can't really blame him though. Like he made a mistake, but still. You know he's not a bad person. It's just his situation, but we don't know that yet. Okay. I'm vaguely aware of moonlight in my room when I sit up in my bed, heart beating painfully fast. What was I dreaming about? I felt like I was dreaming about the king. But why? A few days have already passed since I saw him. I fall back onto the bed. I close my eyes and once again attempt to sleep, but it hovers stubbornly out of my reach. What was that? Who could be making that noise at this time of night? I step out of my bed and head outside to investigate. There's no one here. The sound. It's coming from the tavern. Check. That sounds smart, but not. You know, I mean, we don't know that people are after us and like blah, blah, blah. So at the time, it seems like a good idea. I slowly turn the knob and open the door. Hello? The broom begins to hop toward me. I begin to back away. It's the middle of the night. There's no way I'm going to sweep now. But the broom just hops past to cower behind me. What's some broom you got there? Walt, what are you doing here? I couldn't sleep, so I decided to continue working on some of my puppets. But I accidentally stepped on the broom and it went berserk. I turn around and grab Mr. Broom, leaning against its designated spot on the wall. But why are you here? I heard a sound. I was curious as always. That's going to get you in trouble, you know. I don't need to be lectured by you. I apologize for waking you up. You should go back to sleep. I shouldn't be here if I... I wouldn't be here if I could sleep. Might as well stay for a while. He's like, no, no, please go back to sleep. If that's what you want. Waltz turns back to his puppets on the table. He leans down over the puppets, checking their seams. Since you're here, I think you can help me. Help you? Oh my god! That's so cute! <laughs> it's karma! <laughs> it was a fucking chameleon! What do you think of my newest puppet? I look at Waltz with surprise. With his eyes so wide and his lower lip jutting out, he looks almost like a puppy begging for a treat. Is he expecting a compliment on the puppet? Well, I look closely at the puppet's eyes. It looks evil. Really? I'm glad to hear that. It's going to be the villain in my next show. Thank you for the help, princess. Glad that my mentor approves. Mentor? Waltz doesn't answer. That's it? Indeed. I only offered an opinion, but he looks so happy. What a weird person. I wonder if we, because we used to, remember we used to make puppets and stuff when we were a kid? We said we used to make, um, I wonder if we made them with him. And like, that's what got him into doing it. You know what I mean? Like, he would tell us stories, and then we made like puppets to go with the stories. And then like, that got him into doing puppet You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if it's like some kind of like shared thing. Like, they're like, that's so cute! Oh my god! Waltz resumes his sewing in silence. Because like, we said we used to sew pop. Remember, we used to sew, but the mother said we shouldn't sew. That's why. So maybe we used to do that with him. That's so fucking cute. He's very talented to be able to sew such a complicated animal. He's probably been doing this for a long time to be so skilled. Possibly even longer than I expect, considering the nature of his curse. You look like you've got something on your mind, princess. Well, you've never actually told me how to break your curse. 
Ah, uh, guess I haven't. Waltz clears his throat as he goes back to his sewing. I need to find Tinkerbell in Neverland. Oh, right, you don't know the story. Mother burned all the fairy tale books in the palace before I could read most of them. And nobody would tell me any of the stories. Mother always forbid me from talking about them. Peter Pan is the story of a boy who never grows up. He's accompanied by a fairy friend named Tinkerbell, and the two of them live together in Neverland. In my case, Tinkerbell is a key that can open Neverland. Neverland is a box, a family heirloom. My shadow is being kept in Neverland. That shadow is my magic. Once I get it back, my curse will break. Magic? I'm a witch, princess. He says it so nonchalantly, like stating what his job is. He and Dolores are... the same? I've seen Waltz conjure flowers from thin air before, but I never associated that with the type of magic that witches do. You're a witch? A cursed witch. How is that possible? Only the Tenembraren bearer has the ability to curse another witch. That's why I can only do simple magic nowadays. If I ever want to cast proper spells again, I'm going to need to find Tinkerbell in Neverland. You don't know where Tinkerband Tinkerband and Neverla Neverbell <laughs> Tinkerband and Neverbell <laughs> You don't know where Tinkerbell and Neverland are? No, I don't. Does that mean that you're stuck in this form forever? How about a story? I feel annoyance begin to simmer inside of me. Why do you do that? You change the subject to purposely avoid answering me. No, that's not it, princess. I'm trying to explain, and I think a story is the best way for me to do that. I'm silent as Waltz reaches into his box of puppets. He pulls out two of them, then motions for me to sit in front of him. He holds out a puppet to me, and I can tell he intends for me to wear it on my hand. Oh, he does. They're hand puppets. Okay. My feelings on the subject must show on my face, but Waltz is resolute. Please. I don't know what this will achieve, but maybe this way I'll finally get some answers. Fine. Ah! Look at how cute it is! I love little puppets! Waltz takes a deep breath. Once upon a time, there lived a princess who was always alone. She spent most of her time inside her room as her mother, the queen, forbade her from going out. The princess's only company were her dolls. But the princess so badly wanted friends that she would always sneak out of the palace to play with the children who lived in town. He's telling us our story that's adorable. It's as if he's narrating my childhood. How do you... But Waltz continues speaking as if he doesn't hear me. One day, the princess met a boy. The boy was a few years older than her, and he was the queen's faithful servant. The boy could see how lonely the princess was, and his heart ached for her. They became friends. Every day, he would sneak into her room and would play with her. They spent two years like that, until the queen found out. The boy was sent away, and he never saw the princess again. Until a short while ago. I stumble back, and the puppet slides off my hand as I stare at Waltz, my mind whirling. We've known each other for a long time, princess. This cannot be true. Waltz looks at me again, his expression full of melancholy. I always see that look. He wears it even when he's happy. He seems to carry that sadness with him wherever he goes. We were friends. I never had any friends. I would have remembered. That's what you remember. Your memories have holes in them. Gaps that you can't explain. How do you know that? Because I was there when... When the queen ordered that some of your memories be erased. Mother? But why? I don't believe you. I don't believe any of this. I didn't expect you to believe me. Why is he looking at me like that? It looks like he's in pain. But he can't be telling the truth. I stand up straight, my hands clenched into fists. I'm going back to my room. I almost run from the tavern area. Waltz doesn't try to follow me. That's so sad. He's like, we were like besties and I've loved you since we were kids. Oh, I love it. Oh, he better not fucking die, is all I have to say. I mean, in the bad path, probably, but like, not in the good ending. Let's hope this game knows how to do a goddamn good ending. Fuck. Side note, that's a ramble about another game.
in case you don't watch all the other games that I play, you you know what? You shouldn't. Some of them are too sad, and I'm still hurt over it. God. Walt's words loop persistently in my mind. We were friends. I sat on one of the chairs in the reception area, trying to put my thoughts in order. There's no way that he was my friend. Oh, what's this? What a delight to run into the princess at this hour. But I must ask, why are you still awake, darling? I jump at the sound of Karma's voice. I turn to look at him. Karma frowns at the expression on my face. You look like you've seen a ghost. I can only stare at him in response. Oh my, is my beauty so captivating you find yourself at a loss for words? A little bit, but... No, I was just thinking... About how beautiful I am? His ego knows no bounds. I roll my eyes and change the subject. What are you doing up this late? Hmm, a nighttime stroll? I find myself filled with anyway. I don't know what that is. Anyway? 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 I know what it is, but I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I know it, but I don't. Isn't that weird? You're like, I know that word, but I can't run I don't know how to pronounce, and I don't exactly remember what it means, but I know it. It's like, it's kind of like that moment where you're like, what's that thing that, and I'm trying to remember the word, and you know the word, and it's in there, and you can picture it, but you can't say the word. It's like that, but kind of reverse. Like, it's, I'm watching you spider. It hasn't moved. Right. I'll go and retire for the night now. Have a good sleep. It'll be another long day tomorrow. You don't have to remind me. You still have a ways to go before you get used to the commoner's lifestyle. I certainly struggled with it. Karma barely works. I only ever see him slack off. But wait. Are you a noble, Karma? Perhaps. Perhaps? Perhaps. This is going nowhere. This tavern is full of secretive people. I wonder if this lifestyle has anything to do with his curse. Well, I'm not planning to get used to the commoner lifestyle. I'll break my curse as soon as possible. It seems like we both have a long way to go before that happens, princess. We don't want to play with you anymore. But, but why? We're friends, are we not? Friends? Who said that? You did. We're friends until you stop sharing your toys. But, but that's because you still haven't... What? You haven't returned the toys I gave you. Returned them? You gave them to us. No, I did not. Let's go play with our real friends. Yeah, our real friends aren't selfish. I warned you, dearest one. Didn't I tell you? People will only hurt you in the end. That's why I forbade you from playing with those children. I only ever want what's best for you. I'm sorry, Mother. I'm so sorry. Hush now, dearest one. Mother won't let anyone hurt you anymore. Mother's a fucking bitch. She's a C-word, actually. Family. In this case, your family sucks, princess. Spider. Three weeks have passed since my encounter with the king. I'm once again in town with Waltz as he prepares for one of his shows. I've already lost count of how many of his shows I've watched at this point. The excursions have become part of my daily routine. Waltz has been insistent on training me as his assistant, so I've decided to play along. Even now I'm helping him construct his booth, though he refuses to let me carry anything too heavy. I've experienced so many new things these past few months. Things I'd always wanted to experience, but never told anyone about. Somehow Waltz knew about all of them. Even when he told me that we were childhood friends and insisted that my memories of him had been erased, I hadn't believed him. But now, I'm beginning to believe that he's telling the truth about this forgotten friendship. Walt smiles at me from where he's assembling the front of the booth. He used to dream about getting out of the palace to see Angeal. And now you're here. You can't imagine how happy I am that I can finally fulfill all the promises I made to you. I still have reservations about believing your story, but... Walt, even if you did know me a long time ago, I'm not the same. I hand the small curtain for the I hand him the small curtain for the booth. My head dips so that I don't have to look him in the eyes. I'm not the child you used to know. I know that. I also believe that the girl I knew all those years ago, the one who was always so happy over the smallest things. 
A kind, sincere girl. She's still you. How can that be when I don't think I've ever truly known what happiness feels like? Because you don't remember that you used to know. After Waltz hangs the curtains, the booth is complete. I expect him to step out from the side as he always does, but he sets his palms down on the table instead and looks at me. When I saw you again that day, I was so happy. I thought fate had brought you back to me. Waltz's voice is very soft when he speaks. But then you still didn't recognize me. Waltz's voice trails off and I frown. That's so sad. He's probably loved us since he was a kid. This is why he's the canon route. <laughs> Love it. There's still so many things he's not telling me. Eventually, Waltz picks up his box of puppets and smiles at me brightly. Anyway, I've got a show to perform. Don't go anywhere. I notice his smile doesn't reach his eyes as I watch him walk away. I look out at the crowd that's gathered for the show. There are a lot of families here today. The smile will reach his eyes when you finally remember him and you admit you love him. I watch as two families approach each other. The adults begin to converse with each other while the kids run up to the front of the crowd to catch a better glimpse of the show. Some of the children have shoes, but the parents are barefoot. All their clothes are dirty and torn. Their lives are clearly hard, but they're still smiling. I've never been in desperate need of clothes or food. I've never had to work for anything. I should have been happier than these people when I was a princess. But now, I'm beginning to see that the material things I had were never enough to buy me true happiness. Hello, everyone. I take a step off to the side as Waltz begins his show. Waltz weaves his stories as seamlessly as he always does, captivating his audience with every word. But I'm not paying attention. My focus is locked on the two families standing near me. When I see these people, I can't help but wonder, what kind of life have I been leading? Waltz's show is a success yet again. He's smiling from ear to ear as he counts the coins he's earned as a reward for his good performance. You look happier. Oh, that's me. <clears throat> you look happier than usual. I am. I've been saving money for a special toy, and now I can finally buy it. He says he doesn't like to be treated like a child, but he gets so excited whenever he mentions a new toy. I pause at the sound of laughter and look up to see a group of children talking excitedly to each other as they approach Waltz and I. Ah, this might be an opportunity. An opportunity? Making these children happy might be a good deed. What? Waltz ignores me as he jogs up to the children. Waltz! The group of children swarm him, talking loudly as they each try to cling to him in some manner. And it's like he's barely older than them. He's like, this was me! Like, literally ten years ago, and that was you ten years ago, but you you aged and I'm, I'm still stuck in a twelve-year-old body. But like, we've been waiting forever for you to come back! But I was here a couple of days ago. But you didn't have time to play! Can we play now? Please, please, please! We've been good just like you told us! The boy looks around at the group of children and they all nod their heads with eager agreement. Well, if you've been good as you say, how could I say no? Okay, I don't like kids. I don't. But there is still that thing when, like, you like a man's playing with kids and, like, being, like, the dad figure or, like, the big older brother that you're like, it's kind of fucking cute. And, like, I know he's in a 12-year-old body, but this is kind of fucking cute. Like, you're like, look, he's, like, playing with the little town kids. It's adorable. Kind of like Okita did in Hakuoki, if you watched that one. Like, you're like, it's so cute. But then he was, like, mean to the kid, which was even better. And I'm like, ah, that's even better. Like, like, you're like, oh, it's so cute. He's playing with the kids. Oh, he's being mean to the kids. <laughs> that that makes my soul. That was, that was just so much better for my, with my evil soul. But, you know, I mean, the good side of me still thinks this is adorable. Children cheer. I'm going to start counting now. Come on! He won't find us this time! The children disperse around the area. I watch them go with disinterest. That's your cue to hide, princess. What? Why do I need to take part in this? You don't want to play? But we used to play hide-and-seek all the time. I'm fairly certain I have never played a game like this with anyone before. Is this another memory that was taken from me? Big sister, play with us! A little girl runs up to me and begins to pull me along with her. H hey! I look at Waltz, but he only smiles at me. Seems like I don't really have a choice. Waltz turns to face a wall. He covers his eyes and begins to count. Before I can react, the little girl is let go of me and is running off. What is going on? 
I turn and see a boy hiding behind a barrel. You have to hide before he finishes counting. They didn't even explain the rules of this game. How was I supposed to know what to do? I look around me to find places that I might hide. Maybe behind the tree? Behind the fountain would also work. Or those wooden crates. Ha ha. Which one of these places should I hide in? Behind the wooden crates. Ready or not, here I come. I can't believe I'm sitting on the dirt to avoid being seen. My dress is getting soiled because of a child's game. Found you. My heart begins to race as I turn to look at him, but I realize that Waltz has found one of the children. Oh. It wasn't me. Wait, why am I worried about being found? Got you. Every so often I hear Waltz proclaim that he's found someone, but... He still hasn't found me. Do I get something if I win this game? You still haven't found Big Sister yet! You're right. Where could she be hiding? This is quickly becoming boring. Found you. I jump when I hear Waltz's voice behind me. He looks down at me in triumph. You won, princess. I won? Looks like you're an expert at this game. I am not. You just didn't look hard enough. That doesn't change the fact that you still won the game. You should be happy. Great job, princess. Waltz pats me on the back and smiles once again before he turns his attention back to the children. He's right. His praise makes me feel strangely happy. Why? Right, everyone. That's it. The children begin to whine, clearly disappointed. We only played one round! Now don't be like that. I promise to play another game with everyone soon. Now run along. I'm sure your parents are looking for all of you. One of the children, a little girl, tugs on my sleeve. Thank you for playing with us, big sister. Please come again. She smiles at me before skipping away to join the rest of the children. All the children head off together back toward the residential area of the town. There is something I just love about, like, I'm just imagining us being spacey in the situation and, like, hiding behind the thing and being like, this is oddly fun. I have never had fun in my life. I don't know how to have fun. I just wish in a way, like, she was like, this is so stupid, but I almost wish she had been just a little bit like, why is this fun? Is this fun? Huh. And, like, actually, like, been a little more into it. Like, just a little bit more. Not entirely like, yeah, play hide and seek, but been like, what the hell? Okay, fine. I'll hide behind you. I'm like, why am I hiding? Why is this fun? Like, haha, you'll never find me, Walt. She's <laughs> taking glee and having hidden well. You know what I mean? Just a little bit. Uh, they like you. How do you know that? Didn't you see how happy they were when you joined in? Children are so easy to please. That's why I envy them. Adults aren't like children. They worry, worry too much and don't appreciate the small joys in life. As we grow up, we forget how to be happy. Forget how to be happy? Waltz may be right about that. When I was younger, my dolls brought me so much joy, but now... Anyways, since you won, you deserve a treat. A treat? You'll like it, I promise. Dun dun dun, we're gonna find out what it is later. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this part up here and we'll see what Waltz buys us. I think he was going to buy a special toy. I'm wondering if he was going to buy us like a pretty doll or something. Like, that's adorable. Maybe he's going to buy us some candy huh, or an ice cream. Ooh! Or a cupcake with a karma on it. I mean, a chameleon. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out what our treat is in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.